Hello, welcome to this video on lab number five. Um, what we'll try to do in this video is to go over some of the basics to keep in mind for, for the capacitors lab. First, uh, you have to remember that the capacitor is a, is a component that's made of two blades, uh, two metallic blades, this one blade here, the second blade here, and between them there is an insulator material. Um, when current flows into the capacitor in this way, it will start to, to accumulate charge. Um, there, sh there will be a positive charge on the positive electrode, okay, of value Q, and a negative charge on the negative electrode of value minus Q. These two charges are equal in magnitude and different in sign. Um, and as time goes by, uh, if you ha as you have more current flowing into the capacitor this way, the value of this charge will increase. The electric field inside the capacitor uh, volume, you have electric field here pointing from the positive electrode to the negative electrode become more and more, and the voltage across the capacitor is increasing. So in that case, we said that the capacitor is charging. So current is flowing in from the positive terminal to the negative terminal through the device, okay, through, through the, this component. The charge is increasing, Q is increasing, minus Q is increasing as well. The electric field inside is getting stronger. The voltage between the terminals of the capacitor is also getting higher. We said that the capacitor is charging. The second situation that can happen is this one here. In this case, the capacitor current is negative because it's flowing out from the positive electrode to the negative electrode through the circuit. In this case, the capacitor is actually losing its charge. So this charge Q here on this plate start to flow to the circuit gradually and slowly. The electric field inside is getting weaker. So the electric field that you have here will get weaker. Okay. And the potential uh, voltage difference between the terminals of the capacitor will get lower and lower. So in this case, we say in this situation, capacitor is charging. We see here that the capacitor is charging. Here we have positive current for the capacitor, here we have negative current for the capacitor. Two things to keep in mind as well, that the uh, capacitor current is the derivative of the capacitor voltage multiplying the capacitance, and the capacitor voltage is the integral of the capacitor current. And remember, when you integrate the current flowing into the device in this way, from the very beginning from minus infinity to time t, you are getting the total charge accumulated on the top electrode. And this is why we can replace this one here by Q of T, the charge at time T. So the relationship that really holds the linear capacitor is that Q is equal to CV, which, which is shown here. So these are things to keep in mind. The relationship, the, capacit the current is a derivative of the, of the voltage. The voltage is the integral of the current, and C is the constant of proportionality here. Uh, this, cons this considered the positive current. This consider now a negative capacitor current. Now let's consider a specific example. Um, we have here a capacitor that's connected to a resistor, and then you have a switch. This switch is connected to a battery. Before time zero, this switch was opened. So there was no voltage across the capacitor, no current in the circuit, nothing. At time zero, we close that switch. Okay, what's going to happen? Uh, before, uh, just before you close the switch, we call this time zero minus. Just before you close the switch, there was no voltage across the capacitor, and uh, this is what this what this expression is saying, which means that there was no charge across the capacitor. Remember, Q is equal to CV. Uh, so if the capacitor voltage is zero, the capacitor charge is zero. When you close the switch, you have here a voltage of five volts. If you if you apply KVL, you'll see that this five volts is equal to VR plus VC. And once you close this switch, because the capacitor voltage will have to change in a continuous way. It was zero just before you close the switch. It will stay ze zero for, uh, it will be stay zero at zero minus. So immediately after you close the switch. This is one of the properties of a capacitor voltage. It cannot change instantaneously. In other words, the capacitor voltage cannot go do something like this. Cannot go, say, from five, to three suddenly. No, it has to go down smoothly. Okay, so keep this in mind. So if it was zero just before you close the switch, it will stay to be zero just after you open, uh, uh, after you, the close switch and the switch is closed and the circuit allows current to flow. So let's see what's going to happen. You close the switch at time zero, you have a circuit, current will start to flow from this battery in the circuit, this current called I. Okay. 
and because this current flowing this way the capacitor will start to charge and because it start to charge it will accumulate positive charge here Q in the positive electrode and negative charge minus Q in the negative electrode they are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign okay this will continue to happen until the circuit reaches steady state when we are going to reach steady state when there is no current no further current in the circuit and this will happen when the capacitor is fully charged and this we reach that point when this 5 volts uh, this 5 volts that you have here will be equal, equal to the capacitor, the capacitor voltage. voltage. So the voltage between this point and this point will be also f be 5. So as a result, there is no current going through in the resistor. Okay? So at steady state in infinity, if you allow sufficient time to go through, this current which is flowing from the battery will fully charge the capacitor to a voltage of 5 volts. So between here and here, the voltage is 5 volts. And if you apply KVL, you will see that VR is going to be equal to zero. So in the beginning, after you immediately close the switch, VR was equal to five because VC was zero. Gradually and slowly, as more currents flows into the circuit, VC will increase, VR will go down until we reach a steady state when VC, this point, higher than this point by five volts, and VR is equal to zero. Okay? Once you reach a steady state at sufficiently long time, this means that the current will, will, will reach zero. It's decaying. It's very strong at the beginning, and we can know the value of this current at time zero because there is zero volts here at time zero when you close the switch. Then this whole five volts will appear across VR. Then the current in the beginning is equal to, v, to five over R. Remember, these are time varying um, time varying circuits to time varying quantities so all the currents and voltages are changing with time they are not really DC anymore okay we, we already discussed the 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 behavior of this circuit um, uh, qualitatively let's try to do it quantitatively if you apply KVL you see that 5 volts is equal to VR plus VC okay this is the expression for KVL but VR this VR is nothing but IR and this I is nothing but IC. This current flowing here is the same as the capacitor current. And it's a positive current because the capacitor is charging. Okay? So, so this is really the fundamental equation. 5 is equal to IR plus VC. But the current through the resistor is equal to IC. And the capacitor current is the derivative of the capacitor voltage. Then we can go back and replace this I here, which is IC by C dVC by dt. So this is now the equation governing this circuit. This is the first order ordinary differential equation. And if you divide both sides by RC, this is what you are going to be getting. This equation, we can find the solution for this equation. Uh, it, it's going to have a homogeneous solution and a particular integral solution. Homogeneous solution when you consider this side to be equal to zero. And a particular integral solution when you take this side into account. So uh, if you put this one equal to zero, this will give you an exponential term. And again, I would like you to imagine that Vc is y and t is x. So this is saying that dy by dx plus a, plus a constant multiplying y is equal to zero. So this is an equation we can solve, and I've seen that before in basic calculus courses. So we can get the solution of this equation, and as I said, it's going to be a homogeneous one where we consider this term to be equal to zero, and the particular integral one, we take this one into account. If you take this one into account because this is a constant, the solution, the particular integral one, will be a constant. So this derivative is zero here, and you get that the particular integral one will give you five. Okay, so as I said, to get the homogeneous solution, you set this term equal to zero. Okay, you remove the excitation. This is what we do for our solving ordinary differential equations. And this one here, this equation is known to has a homogeneous solution of this form. Okay, uh, by the way, this term here, RC, we call it tau. We give it the name tau. And remember, that's called the time constant of the circuit, RC. It has units of seconds. Okay, and uh, when you do your lab, you realize this. Tau is RC. It's the time constant of your circuit. So, what we try to do, we got already a, the homogeneous solution. The particular integral solution, as I said, is a constant is 5. 
then the general solution of this circuit is the sum of the particular integral plus the homogeneous one. So you sum these two together. Uh, and you, you apply the boundary condition. I don't know what's V0. V0 is a constant. I have to find it from initial conditions. Initial conditions told me that after immediately after you close the switch, the capacitor voltage was zero. Because before you before you close the switch, it was zero. After you close the switch, it will still it will still have to be zero because it's, it has to be continuous. So if you put here uh, zero and you put time equal to zero, so this will give you one. So 5 plus V0 is equal to 0, or V0 is equal to minus 5. So this is now the general expression for the capacitor voltage. So at time 0, this term is 0, because this factor, at time 0, the voltage, the whole voltage is 0, because this term here will give you 1. e to the power 0 will give you 1. 1 minus 1 will give you 0. At time goes to infinity, this term itself will go to 0. e to the minus infinity is 0, and you get 5. So this is the expression of a charging capacitor. It starts from zero and gradually and slowly rise up to five at infinity. So we can put an example here. If R is equal to one kilo ohm, the capacitor value is one microfarad, then tau is equal to RC. You multiply these two, you get 10 to the minus three seconds. So the expression for, the, uh, for, this, uh, for this waveform uh, will be this one here, okay, 5, 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, 1 over 10 to the minus 3 will give you 1 thousand. so you can write it this way. So this is how the circuit looks like, okay, this is how the behavior looks like. The capacitor voltage starts from 0, gradually and slowly, with time it goes up to 5, it reaches exactly at infinity when this term is perfectly 0. Um, tau determines how fast your circuit charges, because you see, if, if you put t equal to tau, which is 10 to the minus 3. This will give you here e to the minus 1. 1,000 by 2 to the minus 3. e to the minus 1 uh, is 1 over 2.87. So, uh, so this number will be a little bit greater than 0.67. So after 1 tau, your, your voltage have already uh, uh, is maybe to 0.6 of its value. So, uh, so after time tau, so you see this is tau here. The voltage have reached maybe around 0.6 something of its value. Okay, so uh, imagine if we use a smaller resistance. If we use a smaller resistance, then tau will be smaller. If this, if this say is 100 ohm, then tau will be smaller. Smaller means faster charging. So your charging actually will go like this. Okay, so and if you of course if you put the resistance equal to zero. The capacitor will start with charging instantaneously, but you are allowing such a huge current to go through the capacitor, and this may damage the capacitor. So you have to be careful about something like this. We should, we should always have a limiting resistance in the way of the capacitor in the same circuit. Okay, what will happen when you have a capacitor that's charging? So this capacitor starts here with some initial, um, with some initial voltage. Okay, voltage between here and here says 5 volts. And you connect it to a resistor at time zero. There is no other battery here, no other battery in your circuit. Okay, so what's going to happen? The, char the capacitor will start to push current in the circuit in this way. Notice that the capacitor current in this case is negative because the capacitor is losing its charge. And this less charge is used to allow this current and it's going to be used to heat, to heat, to, uh, to heat the uh, resistor. So at time zero, um, v, Vc... Uh, the basic equation really for this circuit is always, not only at time zero, is that Vc is equal to Vr. Okay, these two are the same. And as time goes by, uh, the capacitor is losing its charge. Okay, Q will flow from here. It will gradually sl slowly lose its charge, lose its energy. Okay, the capacitor voltage will start to decay with time. And at steady state at infinity, the capacitor lost all its charge, lost all its voltage, then Vc at infinity between here and here will be zero, Vr at infinity will be zero. Okay? So we start with very high voltage and then gradually and slowly we decay to zero. Remember that uh, this is equivalent really that you have a battery here with value zero volts. Uh, so this is exactly the same situation. Okay, we talked about this circuit uh, qualitatively, let's talk about mathematically. The basic equation is that Vc is equal to Vr. There is no battery here. The capacitor is losing its charge. Okay, what is Vr? Vr is equal to Ir. 
I R. Okay, okay. Remember, we take I C to be positive if it's flowing into the capacitor uh, like this. So here and or or let's put that way. I C is always assumed to be flowing between the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So this current here is minus I C. Okay. So I can simply write V C as minus I C R, and so I can replace now IC by the derivative of the voltage and I'm gonna take this term here and I have here a typo this this one here should be VR uh, just maybe correct it here this is VR okay the VR this is a the resistor voltage is equal to IR and again maybe I should correct it here as well I think I uh, it's, it was it was miswritten okay so the resistor voltage is IR. There is a current flowing here, and this is R. It's IR. But what's I? I is minus C. Remember, IC flows in this direction between the positive and negative terminal. Then I can simply write it this way. It's minus ICR. Replace IC by the derivative of the voltage. Then this is what you have here, okay? Then um, you equate this. So now VC plus minus VR is equal to zero. I can find the expression for the solution again. There is no uh, excitation here, so there is only a homogeneous solution. This is a homogeneous solution. I have to find what's V naught. V naught is the voltage at time zero. If you started before you close the switch and the voltage between here and here was five, then after you close the switch, the capacitor voltage will still be five because it cannot change instantaneously. And as a result, at time zero, if you put T here equal to zero, this term becomes one then V0 is equal to 5. So, let's take an example. Let's have a capacitor. It, its value is, is 0.1 microfarad, resistance of 1 kilo ohm. The time constant RC is 1 k multiplying 10 to the minus 7, so you get 10 to the minus 4 seconds. So you see the capacitor voltage starts with 5, and the gradual and slowly is decreasing with time until it reaches 0. After time 1 tau, it will have dropped to 0.3 something of its initial value because you have this term, uh, the, the exponent you have to mind with is e to the minus t over tau. Okay, uh, so if t is equal to tau, if t is equal to tau, then this term here will become my 1, so this e to the minus 1, so it's 1 over 2.87, so it drops to almost one third of its original value. So if this is five, so maybe dropped here to one point six something, something around uh, around these numbers. Okay, what if we have a square wave? This wasn't just a battery. It's it's going from five to zero and then five to zero and so on. During the 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 beginning, the capacitor will start to charge. During so during this period of time here, the capacitor will start to charge. You have five volts. The capacitor is here is not charged. It will start to charge. So you get something like this, okay? Maybe it will charge fully or not, depending on how, uh, what, how is the width of this square wave, the time, compares to the time constant of the capacitor, okay? Now, the, this suddenly becomes zero, and then the, the, the capacitor current will reverse direction. The capacitor current, by the way, can reverse direction instantaneously. And then the capacitor will tell this a charge. So... This is what's going to happen. This you see suddenly it start to decay with time. And if you allow sufficient time in this in this period here, you will see that uh, it will be fully near fully discharged. And then it repeats itself in the other cycles. So it starts to charge again to 5, and then it decays again to 0 and so on. Okay? What if the if the square wave time is not sufficient, then the capacitor will, need, will not be fully charged. It will only charge to partially, maybe a certain amount here, and then it will use this, use this charge. So it will not charge fully to 5, maybe it will charge to 3 or 3.3 or whatever. Okay, now we have another situation. What if you have a capacitor like this? It had, it had an initial charge of 5, but this switch was opened at time 0. Before time 0, it was, it was opened. You close it at time 0. It's connected to a battery of minus 5. At times when you close switch, what's going to happen? The capacitor will push current. The battery is trying to push current in the same direction. They are helping one another, actually. Okay? So the capacitor will continue to lose its charge. But the only difference here is that this battery will start now 
because of its polarity to accumulate positive charge here and negative charge here. And steady state is reached when the voltage of the capacitor between here and here. So this point will be higher than this one by 5 volts. And then there is no current in the circuit. So in the beginning, you have very strong current flowing. The capacitor is discharging, but it does not discharge to zero. It, it discharges to minus 5 because the battery voltage between here and here is minus 5. In other words, if the voltage between this point and this point is 5, then the voltage between th this point and this point will also be 5 at time, at time infinity. And in that case, there is no current in the circuit. Okay? So remember, at infinity, there is no current. The capacitor is fully discharged to minus 5. Okay? This is not a charging to zero. You see here, this is we tried three situations. We, we tried this one when this one was 5. We got charging. When this one was 0, we got this charging. And when this one was minus 5, it will be this charging, but not to 0, but to minus 5. In general, in general, the expression of a capacitor voltage can be given by this one. This is the final voltage. This is a battery voltage. It can be 5 or 0 or minus 5. This is a starting voltage that the capacitor had. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3. What, what was the initial voltage in the beginning? This is, again, this EF. This is the final voltage going to charge this charge to. This is a time constant tau. Uh, in the first example, we started with 0. So E start with 0. E final was 5. Okay? Write the expression. You'll see it is the same one we got. In the second example, the capacitor was discharging. We started with 5. And it was a charging, this a charging to zero. So E final was zero. In the third example, it was starting with five, and this is charging to minus five. So in this case, in the last example, uh, what we're going to say, E start is five. The battery had an initial voltage of five, starting voltage of five. It's going to be this a charging to minus five. And tau is one millisecond. We're going to take this number. Of course, it depends on R and C. So this is the expression you're going to be getting. And if you try to blot it, the capacitor will start from 5, gradually slowly is decaying with time, its voltage until it drops to minus 5 at, my, at, at infinity. Okay, what if you have a square wave that's oscillating between 5 and minus 5 at the, at the source? So the source is not really DC. So what's going to happen in, in this period of time, the capacitor will start to charge. It can be full charge or not, depending on how the time, how is the time constant tau relates to the uh, width of the square wave. And then once it reaches 5, say it's going to be fully charged, it will start to discharge gradually and slowly to minus 5. Okay? And if the time, this time is sufficient, it's going to be fully discharged. And then it repeats the cycle again. It's going to be charged and discharged. Okay? It may not be charged fully again, as I said. It depends on how tau... And, uh, and, uh, and the widths of the square wave compared to one another.